Continuing on from socialism, we see moving left on a political spectrum, we move eventually to communism. Now, communism is really what we refer to as a loaded term in the American political dialogue. And what I mean by loaded term is it's used in so many ways to convey so many ideas and emotions and trying to massage and manipulate the public to believe something about something else that most Americans are not entirely clear about what pure theoretical communism is. And in fact, even if you are interested in that understanding, um, reading Karl Marx, um, who developed communism, is not easy. Uh, Marx is a difficult read, and understanding communist thought is difficult. So really we're talking about two different things. We're talking about communism, pure theoretical communism right now. And of course we're going to make some comments about how the term communism is used in um, an all-encompassing way, in a ubiquitous way, meaning people use it whenever they want to um, because communism is now seen as a way to discredit people if they challenge anything on the other part or the other side of the spectrum, meaning if you somehow or another challenge capitalism, liberal democracy, or cl classical liberalism, it's very easy to start labeling people as socialist or communist to discredit them, even though um, that would be completely inappropriate based on what they might be arguing. So, uh, communism is an economic, social, and political system and basically communism is born out of an analysis of the capitalist system. Marx believed that through the competitive system of capitalism and through the belief that there is, or the reality I should say, that there is a group of people that own and have the capital, the money, and a bunch of people that work, which that's the bulk of society, the working class, there's a continual exploitation going on. And history tells us that that's largely true. So um, what Marx believed was is that the working class, the proletariat, would become so upset, so unhappy, so miserable, because the owners of capital, through exploiting the working class to increase their profit and their own standard of living, would the working class would be so become so unhappy that they would rise up in rebellion in revolution either in violent or peaceful whichever one um, and that they would eventually want property to be redistributed that the notion that private property um, would leads to some type of, or we should say private property ownership, leads to some type of freedom, Marx thought was ridiculous. Marx looked at the world in an economic manner. He defined human relations relationships through economics. So Marx believed that the promise of liberal democracy, over here on the right part of the spectrum, was essentially a false promise. Marx believed that you could be politically free to vote in as many elections as you want. You could have civil liberties and so forth. But if you are always being exploited, if you do not have a means in which to protect yourself economically, um, if you are not allowed to work um, toward what you want to work toward rather than being at the uh, mercy of an employer, um, that... You will be exploited. You will not be able to reach your full capacity as an individual. Um, and that relationship is going to be exploitive because of the fact that in capitalism, it's about profit and maintaining profit and competition. There's always winners and losers. Um, so Marx believed that eventually the working class would rise up. They'd want a redistribution of wealth. And essentially, um, capitalism would give way to socialism moving in this direction right here. Okay, um, so um, in socialism, we've already discussed that there's a um, 
a redistribution of wealth by the government because the government has assumed control of property ownership. And Marx believed this, that communism first had to go through socialism. Now there's a lot of other belief systems that have evolved since and what Lenin believed and, and so forth. That goes beyond the point of this lecture. But essentially, after socialism and the redistribution of wealth, what we're really talking about is that the working class would want more equality. Marx believed that the class struggle is what essentially um, would be the ruination of capitalism. Now, once the um, government controlled the property and uh, started redistributing wealth so that they broke down the class uh, system, uh, Marx believed that it would eventually evolve into communism, um, a classless society. You often hear that term, class distinction, in the political U.S. political dialogue. Um, and in fact, um, for example, in uh, last year's election, the 2012 election, uh, I remember uh, candidate Rick Santorum giving a victory speech and basically saying there was no um, uh, class difference in America. We're all Americans and so forth. Well, that's uh, obviously just not true in the sense that there is an impoverished class, there's a lower economic class, a lower middle, a middle, an upper middle, and an upper. And actually what I just described has always been the traditional uh, multiple levels of economic class. But what most people, or I should say many people, would suggest, which is backed up by the economic indicators, is, is that there's really uh, a middle class that's being gutted um, and reduced and almost eliminated that essentially we're, we're becoming a, a system of have and have nots. Um, whether that's true or not, uh, the analysis of where the class levels break off in America uh, continues. Um, there's clearly a set of classes in America. There are wealthy, there are well-off upper middle class, there are middle class, there are poor people. So to say that there's no class society is not true. It's built into the system of capitalism. Um, and uh, the promise of capitalism is that you have upward mobility and can move from one class to another and improve your um, standing in, in, in a country, in a society, and so forth. And of course, Marx thought that that was not true, um, that it was only um, a matter of time uh, to where those class distinctions um, essentially uh, created so much friction that there was uh, a revolution and uh, the working class said we've had enough, uh, we're more interested in equality, getting rid of private ownership, that exploitation, redistribution of wealth, and eventually, as I said before, that we would have this evolution to communism. And communism is a system where it's obviously the underpinning is socialism, um, uh, but where we would have people that worked, created art, produced things based on either what they wanted to do, not what a employer uh, wanted them to do, or what was necessary for society. And that Marx really believed unless you had that kind of system, you would never truly be free. Um, that you can never be free and be uh, essentially um, an entirely uh, liberated person, no matter how many political freedoms you have, if you don't have some type of um, economic freedom um, from exploitation. One of the aspects of communism that receives a lot of attention is this idea of um, a utopian society where there's no need for government because um, people are now producing and their best behavior uh, from each's ability to each person according to their needs and that the government would wither away. There wouldn't be a need for a state or what we refer to as a, you know, a state or a government um, in that sense. Um, it would be a communal social relationship. And that's pretty difficult to foresee for most anyone to believe could happen. But that is one of the aspects of Marxism that certainly receives a lot of attention because 
it, it just seems to be quite unrealistic. However, what you must understand is that Marxist critique of capitalism is alive and well. And if we look at the Occupy movement from the last few years, the 99% um, as they refer to society, uh, meaning the concentration of wealth in 1% and everybody else, um, if we talk about uh, or what you hear about is the exploitation of workers, corporate abuses and so forth, Marxist critique of capitalism is alive and well. Um, that does not necessarily mean if you believe what Marx said that that makes you a communist. It just means that as a philosopher, uh, there's many things um, that he spoke to um, that very well might still be applicable in your mind. Um, so communism is essentially where we have an emphasis on equality, but eventually uh, a whole different set of social relations um, that moves far away from liberal democracy because although liberal democracy places, um, and of course, um, just to reiterate, liberal democracy in this area over here of the spectrum, liberal democracy emphasizes economic freedom and political freedom. And again, Marx is saying, look, political freedom is great, but it doesn't mean anything um, if you don't have economic freedom because it's the economic masters that will control the political system and that will uh, be a false promise of freedom. Um, and so Marx believes the only way to be truly free is to be free of those economic uh, relationships, um, those, those contradictory relationships of, uh, of uh, the haves and the have-nots. All right, we could go on, but we need to move uh, back over to this side uh, of the spectrum and talk about uh, reactionary belief systems and also fascism. Very briefly on reactionary or someone who's a reactionary. Uh, being a reactionary, sometimes people often place it on a political ideological spectrum, even though um, it's often thought of as a political attitude and not necessarily a, uh, an ideology. But I'm throwing it on there because one way to think about a reactionary ideologically is someone who largely stems or flows from the conservative belief system in this direction. Um, but remember, conservatism is defined by status quo. Being conservative, by nature of the word, means being cautious, slow, protecting the status quo, meaning the current status of affairs and so forth. Someone who's a reactionary is someone who um, wants to react to the certain the current economic, political, social system, and they want to react in a way of going back. Going back and, and reinstating a system, social system, political system, or values or beliefs that existed years prior. So um, if you think about the Tea Party, the Tea Party is not just interested in maintaining the status quo. The Tea Party element of the Republican Party is reactionary in the sense that they want to go back and reinstate certain values that they believe existed years ago in this country. Now, sometimes those values did exist, and sometimes reactionary forces want to go back and reinstate certain belief systems that are mythological. They never really existed, but people think they did because they've been romanticized so much. It can go in any number of ways. So reactionaries are people who are ultra conservative, but they're actually beyond conservative. They don't, they don't just want the status quo and to be cautious. They want to turn the clocks back and go backward. So if you think about the Tea Party saying that we want, um, you know, thinking about and calling upon terms from the revolutionary period, hence the name Tea Party, no taxation without representation and protecting the Second Amendment and things like this. They want to go back and reinstate certain social and political standards that they believe have been eradicated or eroded and so forth. Reactionary is not always a proper term to be on or have on a political spectrum because it can apply to any country. If, for example, we apply it to China, China is becoming less communist less leftists 
and becoming more economically liberal, which makes them more conservative in the economic classical liberalism sense. A reactionary who wants to go back to the previous manner in which a society existed in China might be someone who believes that communism and communist economic theory should be reinstated and, we, and that they should stop uh, necessarily this liberalization of the economic system. They should stop that move and march toward capitalism. So reactionary is really about going backward. Um, so it's something that we can put here in understanding who reactionaries are in America, but it would be, um, it would be placed in different places on different spectrums in different countries and explain different aspects in different countries. Um, so I don't want to spend too much more time on that to confuse anyone. Let's move on and talk about our last term and that is fascism. Fascism is a difficult term for people to understand because if you, going back to Google and Googling terms such as fascism and political spectrums, if you go out there and look in societies, if you look at other political science instructors, um, political theory instructors, people will have fascism listed in different places on the spectrum. By and large, you'll see fascism over here on the right. Um, however, fascism is often listed over here on the left as well. And there's a tendency for people to list fascism on the left because as we move, again, as we move this direction, okay, uh, on a spectrum, we're moving away from liberal democracy. We're moving away from political um, individual freedom toward equality. Um, we're moving away from uh, that and emphasizing equality more so. And because fascism is a system that essentially takes away freedoms, uh, many people equate it with uh, l the left part of the spectrum. However, there are strong limitations there, and there's all, all, t all types of reasons why it belongs on the right side. And the reason it belongs on the right side is, is that fascism uh, places no emphasis, and this is very important to understand, places no emphasis on, really, liberty or freedom, we should say, or equality. It places no freedom on liberty or equality. Okay, it doesn't care about either one, quite frankly. What fascism cares about, cares about is the power of state, of the state, meaning the power of, to make it simplistic at this level, the government. They care about the power of the state. So here we have on the spectrum, again, this, this side of the spectrum, we care about liberal democracy. The, the, the Tea Party movement cares about individual freedom gun ownership and uh, taxation, proper taxation policies and so forth. Okay, over here we care about equality. Again, over, over here we care about liberty. There's this massive shift that happens that it doesn't, is not a natural evolution beyond the conservative movement. Fascism does not care about liberty and it doesn't care about equality. Okay, it cares about the power of the state. Now, the reason I have it, or I should have this, I should say I have this capitalism aspect up here that draws a line all the way over to fascism is because there is still private ownership in a fascist society. However, the ruling political class or party or element ensures that whatever private ownership and state ownership exists the primary purpose and function is to benefit the power of the state. Okay, to benefit the power of the state. And what does the state do with that power? It expands its power even more. Increases military power, uses that military power to expand its control of natural resources of other parts of the world, uh, other parts of their own territory, their continent. Um, it protects its power in general. Okay, and if we go back over here to the left side of the spectrum, what is this side worried about? Well, it's worried about equality. What is it worried about? Um, it's worried about redistrib redistribution of wealth. How do you do that? By having the government 
own and control property. So um, because the government has a certain degree of power over property ownership here, um, people equate fascism with the left side of the spectrum. However, if we're talking pure theoretics, the whole purpose of the government coming into power under socialism and communism is to control resources to redistribute them to promote equality. Okay, If we're talking pure theoretics, fascism is not interested in acquiring property to redistribute and it's not interested in acquiring property to ensure private ownership so that it reinforces liberal democratic uh, 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 rights and so forth and power. It is purely meant to essentially reinforce the power of the state. Fascism exists by exploiting minorities or other identifiable groups. Nazi Germany uh, demonized and scapegoated the Jews uh, in Germany and uh, essentially no sense you were allowed to own property in Germany but not if you were uh, a Jew and not if you were uh, essentially someone who did not fit the ethnic uh, interest and profile that the Nazi party wanted uh, Germany to uh, to carry on with. Um, so fascism itself has nothing to do with freedom, has nothing to do with equality, has to do with the power of the state and those that control government and essentially the state, the institutions of a society. Um, it is about those people deciding how society should be constructed um, and how power should be distributed um, and it isn't based on individual freedom as in a liberal democracy civil liberties and it's not based on equality um, it's based on none of that now keep in mind you can have left-wing dictators communist dictators and you can have right-wing dictators okay um, so yes you can have governmental control and suppression of free speech and political rights and so forth on the left and the right side. Um, fascists uh, are not interested in labor unions. They don't believe in that redistribution of wealth. They don't believe in civil society, meaning organizations that exist beyond government organizations because organizations that exist beyond government organizations tend toward to lead toward democratic behavior and they don't want that they want control tight control of society um, so um, a lot of the things that are embraced on the left such as promotion of labor unions and equality and civil society they are not embraced on the right but yet you can have dictatorial control of a society from uh, controlling wealth and not really redistributing it properly and even if you do still maintaining a certain degree of dictatorial power and of course on the right you can have dictatorial power and not be concerned with any degree of liberty or equality so dictators come in all different forms um, on the left and the right um, but you must understand there are differences fascism is a term just like communism that is used in the political dialogue um, to accuse people of something to discredit them we know President Obama has been accused of being a socialist, a communist, a fascist, every bit of it. Um, and um, that's because these are, again, loaded terms that most people do not have a clear theoretical understanding of, um, but yet because of the fact they differ from capitalism, um, from classical liberalism and liberal democracy, um, essentially um, they are powerful terms um, that are used, again, to discredit anybody that wants to move beyond this very comfortable area right here in American politics, which is liberal, center, and conservative, okay? Um, or even someone that exists within that area, okay? So that concludes uh, the discussion on political ideology and the U.S. political spectrum. This is the third and final um, tutorial video. Uh, there are many questions that can, should, and will flow from this if you were to watch all three of these. Um, clearly, uh, the process of learning means that you're thinking about these things, you have questions. Um, if you do, feel free to make comments in the comments section below this video. 
um, I can respond uh, or uh, I am happy to conduct another follow-up um, video tutorial uh, to address some of those questions um, because there's so much information I've thrown at you uh, in these lectures that undoubtedly um, many questions come from that.